so the instrument that we are going to talk about today is a centrifuge now most of the time in food analysis we make use of such type of instrument when we have to separate any liquid samples uh, in sense suppose you have prepared any extract of food uh, substance in any maybe maybe in a, any aqueous media or it may be non aqueous media like your aqueous in sense uh, when you are using water whereas your uh, non aqueous media or uh, solvent is like your chloroform methanol hexane so whenever you are extracting the food in such type of liquid media now in the extract that you will receive in that you will have the food particles as well as the solvent in which your component has been extracted now in order to further analyze the product you have to remove the extract uh, extract of the sample in that is the solvent and then uh, you have to separate out from the food particles because in the extract when you prepare your food particles will also be there as well as the solvent in which your extract i mean the uh, like component has been extracted now in order to separate such type of samples you can make use of centrifuge now uh, to talk about the basic principle of centrifuge it actually works on the sedimentation principle that means depending on the component of the sample that you are putting inside so in that component depending on the density of those components your sample will get separated now suppose in the same extract of food that you have prepared now the food particles which was present in the sample will settle on the bottom because the density is heavier and the one of the uh, like uh, or the solvent in which you have extracted that will float on top because the density is lesser so now the uh, like uh, whatever the uh, solid that has been uh, precipitated or that has been sedimented at the bottom that we call it as uh, precipitate residue or pellet so any of the three you can call and the one which is floating on top that is called to be as supernatant okay now uh, to talk about why this uh, sedimentation or why this separation it occurs is because of the centrifugal force now what happens is inside the instrument there is a rotor which rotates at a very high speed okay so depending on the speed or the depending on the centrifugal force so the heavier particles will move towards the outward direction and then sedimentation takes place so once it is rotating that towards the outer it will go and then sediment at the bottom part okay so that's how you can receive the pellet and then you can separate out so now uh, to talk about the operation panel that has been given or the control panel so you can see there are this there is this um, uh, regulator which is for the speed now this centrifuge since it works at a high speed so that's why you have a speed controller okay and now you see that there is this two display units this one uh, the top one is for the speed that means at what speed you want the centrifugation process to take place now suppose you want the centrifugation at 3000 rpm 5000 rpm or 8000 rpm just by increasing from here from this you can set the speed here okay next thing is about the time that means how much time this second panel that you can see it is for time so how much time you want the centrifugation process to take place now suppose uh, at uh, uh, like uh, most of the time in the procedures you will find that you have to centrifuge it at 8000 rpm for 10 minutes okay so that means you have to with this regulator you have to set the rpm here and also here you see there is this set button okay so with this uh, set button this is for time so once you press this the time will keep on increasing so that that's how you can set the time so here by pressing it you can set the time to 10 minutes so once you do that once everything you have set your rpm is set your time has been set so the next thing is you have to turn the instrument on so for that reason you you see there is this two more buttons that has been given okay the first one is for motor that means once you turn in the this uh, switch the instrument the motor will start rotating at a speed and the second one is brake now happens that once you keep the like suppose the for at 8000 rpm at uh, for 10 minutes you have kept the instrument then automatically after 10 minutes the speed of this instrument will come down it will come down to zero and then you will see here again the reading will be zero now in case if it happens that you have set the instrument for 10 minutes but for some reason you want to stop the instrument to work you don't want the centrifugation process to take place because of whatever reason so in that case what you can do is this motor you can turn off and there is this brake you can turn it on once you put the brake the speed of that instrument will will get reduced and then the, you can see again the speed is coming to zero only then you are supposed to open the instrument never open an instrument when it is rotating at a high speed okay so this is the uh, basic thing now i will just uh, like uh, let you see how the instrument it looks from inside okay now one more important thing is whenever you are using an you are using this centrifuge or uh, uh, like centrifuge you have to keep the sample in centrifuge tubes 
okay so these are what we call it as centrifuge tubes so that means the liquid sample that you want to separate you have to take the entire extract in this type of tube and then you have to keep inside the now talking about the most important part while keeping the sample is that you have to make sure that you are balancing the instrument whenever you are keeping now suppose you have uh, now whenever you are extracting you um, like it might be possible that you are having only one tube in one tube you are taking the sample but in order to balance that uh, in the instrument you have to make sure suppose if this one is the sample that you have got is of uh, 50 gram you have to make sure you are giving one more tube just exactly in the opposite position which is also 50 grams okay so you have to uh, take you have to measure this uh, very uh, uh, like properly and then you see that both the weight of these tubes comes equal so suppose in one tube of the food that you have 50 gram in the other tube if you don't have any extract or food extract what you can do is you can just put it blank water okay now in that water also when you are weighing it should come to 50 gram sometimes if even if your sample is having more heavier and the water that you have kept is in is uh, not of 50 gram or equal weight to this uh, sample tube in that case you can also put glass beads so that only thing is only your purpose is that you see that both these tubes are coming equal and then when you are keeping inside the instrument you have to keep on the exact opposite position so that the instrument is balanced if that doesn't happen when your sample will rotate at a very high speed the instrument won't i mean the rotor it won't uh, rotate at a uh, like a uniform uh, pattern okay so since if one side the weight is more so the uh, like uh, the sample the centrifugation won't be proper and also the more important thing is your instrument will damage very fast okay so that is why you have to make sure that you while keeping the sample inside you are keeping it in a balanced condition so that's why if you have only one tube of sample take the other tube with the blank and then you can still run the instrument so that is uh, the like uh, important points now let me show you how it looks from inside or how to put the sample inside okay, so now the thing that you can see is the lid of the instrument so first thing is you have to open this lid now this thing that you can see is called to be as rotor now rotor of different types so the one that we are having it here is called to be as fixed rotor that means this is fixed at one particular uh, angle and that angle cannot be changed okay so this instrument i mean uh, most of the time this fixed angle rotors are being fixed at 45 degrees okay so if you can see this part okay where your your you have to insert in the samples you are putting that is at a fixed angle of 45 degrees now there are also rotor where the like uh, the sample tubes that you can put it is kind of a swinging okay so that if the tube holders will be freely moving or even it, it, it can be in the form of a bucket that means in the bucket you are putting the sample so those are also freely moving but since this one doesn't move so it is uh, always fixed at one particular angle that's why this is called to be as uh, like a fixed angle rotor and the other one which is swinging is called to be a swinging bucket rotor okay so depending on the need uh, you can you can have different kind of rotors so now next thing is for keeping the sample you have to open the lid of this rotor so this is kind of for safety so that your sample doesn't bump out so that's why this lid you have to open so this is the main rotor so now you see this uh, this place that you can see this hose in this you have to keep the sample tubes okay centrifuge tubes now this size also it differs from instrument to instrument or the rotor head so there are now this one is having a rotor head that we can ad, uh, like adjust the sample tube of 50 ml okay so this is a sample tube of 50 ml there are also tubes now if, if in case if you have sample where the sample volume is less suppose say around uh, 15 ml or 20 ml so in that case you can take the tube of 25 ml okay so, but in this in this uh, like sample tube holders in this kind of rotor you cannot set 15 ml uh, or 25 ml tubes so that's why this rotor head also you have to change depending on the sample volume that you have now since in our food analysis most of the time we get the extract of around 40 50 ml so that's why this kind of tubes are being used now the thing that we have said is whenever you are keeping the sample you have to make sure that the instrument is balanced so what we do is we will keep exactly in the opposite position okay so suppose this one is of 50 grams so one tube if i am keeping it here 50 grams then the other tube also which is of exactly 50 grams we have to keep it in the opposite position okay so like this now this is only about two tubes if you have more than two tubes suppose if you have four tubes so you just keep in the opposite one if you have six tubes again you keep it in the opposite one so your main uh, thing is you have to make sure that whenever you are keeping the sample tubes those are balanced and um, 
so then the centrifugation process will be properly done in case if you have only three uh, three samples so what you can do is you can take these two uh, in the opposite here also you can take the third sample now in the opposite one this one you can just take a blank sample that means it can be your water or uh, uh, any other solvent so but make sure that these two tubes are again also of same weight okay all these are of same weight and then it is balanced so now once you have kept inside the instrument uh, then you just close the rotor head the lid of this so that the uh, like whenever it is rotating at a very high speed the sample doesn't bump out so once that is done you have to just close the lid of the instrument and then you have to now because these are already set so then you have to just start the motor so once you start the motor inside the rotor that you have seen it can it, it will rotate at a very high speed and then because of the uh, centrifugal force or because of the sedimentation principle so your uh, the sample which is having higher density that will settle down and the solvent with the extract which is having lower density that will settle up so or that is that will float up 